Good morning, guys. So as you can see, my face is not on the screen today. I am just really tired and I look it. So I thought it would be easier if I didn't include my face today. Um, if you are sad that you are not seeing my face, I'm very sorry, but most of you will see me tomorrow. Um, today for class, what you'll need to do is, um, well, this is for quarantine kids, so you might see me tomorrow. Um, but what you'll want to do is head on over to Classroom, and you're going to want to open up the um, 514-875 assignment. It'll look like what is on the right of my screen with the mask, if you've got the right one. And then you'll also want to open up the Oedipus Rex script as well, because that is going to be something we are utilizing today uh, as we read. All right. And you're going to join me on page 15, line 514. So let's go all the way down to here. All right, um, we're going to be starting here with Crayon. Um, so basically where we last left off, uh, Oedipus brings in the blind seer, also known as Tiresias, and proclaims that um, Tiresias probably had a hand in murdering the prior king. Um, but since Tiresias is blind, he probably had help. At least this was what Oedipus charges against him. And... Um, Tiresias turns around and says, well, actually, you are the murderer, and Oedipus totally is the murderer. And so Oedipus doesn't like that. He's like, you know what? You probably did plan to murder Laius, and I bet Crayon, my brother-in-law, helped you. And so this is where we start off, is Crayon heard these rumors that Oedipus was saying about him, and he's actually really upset. <laughs> um, and so, like, anybody would be, basically, Crayon implies that, like, Oedipus has been talking, like, maddish about him, and so he shows up to, like, set the rumors straight. And so we have Crayon here, who is going to come into the palace and immediately want to talk to Oedipus. And there's going to be a lot of mudslinging or, like, um, insults. And then Jocasta is going to show up, finally, and she has this, like, hilarious, like, mom energy when she enters the room. So I'm excited to read this with you today. All right. So take a, let's get started on page 514. Um, it says, Friends, countrymen, King Oedipus has laid against me a most grievous charge, and I come here to you protesting. If he deems that I have harmed or injured him in any way by word or deed in this our present trouble, I care not to prolong the span of my life, thus ill-reputed for the infamy. It's not a single blot blasts my name if by the general voice I am denounced false to the false state and false to you, my friends. Okay, So he's like, I heard that Oedipus was talking crap about me. I'm not going to stand for that, so I'm here to set the record straight. The chorus, which acts as the peanut gallery, is going to kind of comment in and out of this scene. And here they say, this taunt is well made, was blurted out in anger, but not spoken good advisedly. Remember, Oedipus has a terrible temper on him. And so here we see that pointed out again by the chorus. The crown says, did anyone dare to pretend that it was I who prompted the seer to utter such a false charge? And, and the chorus says, such things were said with the intent I don't know. And Crayon says, were not Oedipus wits and wisdom vision all astray when upon me he fixed this monstrous charge? Like, was he in his right mind? And the chorus is like, I don't know, to, the, to my king's acts, my sovereign's acts, I am blind. And then Oedipus comes into the room, and this is where it gets feisty. It's like an episode of Jerry Springer, but you might be too young for Jerry Springer. Um, so like Maury, anything like that, where it's just like drama for chaos, trauma and chaos for views. Um, so the chorus says, but look, he comes to answer for himself. And the first thing Oedipus says to Crayon when he comes into the room is, Traitor, what are you doing here? Do you presume to approach my doors, you brazen-faced rogue? My murderer and thief of my crown, come, answer this. Did you detect in me some touch of cowardice or stupidity that made you undertake this enterprise? I seemed you too simple to perceive the serpent stealing on me in the dark, or else too weak to stop at what I saw. You are foolish yourself seeking to possess without following your friends the crown, a prize that followers and wealth must win. All right, so basically he like busts in, he's like, you're a traitor, you're a, you're a rogue, how dare you? And Crayon says, listen to me, you have spoken and now it is my turn. To make my reply after hearing, you may judge me. And then Oedipus is like, well, you art glib of tongue. Glib means like charming, um, but I am slow to learn from you. I know too well your venomous hate. Crayon says, first I would argue to up this very point. Oh, argue not. You are not a rogue. And Crayon says, if you count stubbornness a virtue untaught by reason, you are much in error. And Oedipus says, if you think a kinsman may be wronged and no pains follow, you have much to learn. Crayon says, you're right about that. But this crime that you allege against me, tell me what it is. Oedipus says, did you or did you not advise that I call the priest? And then Crayon says, yes, I stand by it. And Oedipus says, tell me how long it has been since lies. Since lies what? I do not follow you. By violent hands was spirited away, killed. 
uh, in the dim past many years ago. Did the same prophet then pursue his craft? Yes, skilled as now and in no less repute. Did he at the time ever glance at me? Okay, and says, not to my knowledge, uh, not when I was there. And Oedipus says, but was no search or inquisition made? And Cran says, surely a full inquest was made, but nothing learned. And Oedipus says, well, why didn't the seer tell his story then? He's like, well, so, so if I'm the murderer of, of Laius, is what Oedipus is saying, why didn't he just say that then? He's like, why does it need to come out now? This seems really ill-timed. Um, and Crayon says, I don't know, and not knowing, hold my tongue. And Oedipus says, this much you shall know and can surely tell. And, and Crayon says, what do you mean? All I know I will declare. Um, Oedipus says, if you hadn't prompted him, the seer would never have accused me of killing Laius. And Crayon says, if he said that, you'd know it best, but would your, but I would question you in my turn. And Oedipus says, question and prove me murderer if you can. And Crayon says, then ask me, did you marry my sister? And Oedipus says, a fact so plain I can't deny. And Crayon says, and you're, as your as your queen, she shares the throne. And Oedipus says, I share, I grant her freely all her heart desires. And Crayon's like, and with you, I share triple rule. Which means that Crayon, Oedipus, and um, Jocasta are basically a triumvirate, which implies that they rule as a three-man all together. All right, so they each have an equal set of power, but Oedipus is the face of the kingdom. Um, and then Crayon says, and with you too, I share triple rule. And Oedipus says, yes, and the fact that you prove a false friend. All right, um, really quickly. So Crayon comes into the palace, um, and he wants to talk to Oedipus. Um, and he wants to confront him, basically, about this desire that Oedipus has implied that uh, Crayon wants to be king, which is false. And, and Crayon here is going to lay out very quickly um, here in just a few moments the concepts of why he's not interested in being king, and that'll be uh, for this question down here. Um, it says, why is Oedipus so upset with Crayon at the beginning of the scene? He believes in his heart of hearts, Oedipus believes in his heart of hearts, that um, Crayon and Tiresias are plotting to overthrow him as king and take the throne. Um, and so he's, he's very upset. He's like, I am the king. I don't want to be murdered like the last guy. All right. So the next one's going to be, um, Crayon outlines three reasons he has no desire to be king. And that's going to be in his speech here. Um, we've got a lot more to go, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in this section of our story. All right. So Crayon says, not so if you think about it reasonably as, as I do. First, I ask you think, would any mortal choose a troubled reign of terrors rather than a secure peace if the power were the same, if the same power were given him? He's like, I already have the same powers. I, I don't need more. <laughs> um, and as for me, I have no natural craving to be king, preferring to do the deeds of a king. And so thinks every sober-minded man. Now all my deeds are satisfied through you. And I have nothing to fear. But if I were king, my acts would often run counter to my will. And how could a title that have charms for me above the sweets of boundless influence? I'm not so eager to grasp the shadow that when I hold the substance. Now all men cry me Godspeed, wish me well, and every suitor seeks to gain my ear if it would hope to win favor from you. Why would I leave better? Choose the worst. That were sheer madness, and I am not mad. No such ambition has ever tempted me, nor would I have shared in such intrigue. Okay, so Crayon outlines, like, I would say three big reasons, all right? Um, he has no desire to take on the troubled the troubles of being king. Um, he understands that when you become king, it is overwhelming, and there's a lot that that comes with. And he kind of likes that he has the power of being royalty without necessarily being, like, king. Um he also outlines that he has power really similar to him without the responsibility, which he also really enjoys. And lastly, he's never desired to be king, like ever. <laughs> Even when they didn't have a king, he didn't want to be king. All right. Um, and so the chorus responds to the one who walks warily, his words commend themselves with judgments are not sure. So don't jump to conclusions, basically. And Oedipus says, when with swift strides a stealthy plotter stalks, I must be quick, too, with my counterplot. To await his attack passively for him is sure success for me, a sure defeat. Okay, so Oedipus feels like he needs to act quickly because if he doesn't, that gives his murderer, who is technically himself, uh, <laughs> um, more time to act. And he doesn't like that. All right. Um, and then Crayon responds, well, then what is your will to banish me from the land? And Oedipus responds, I would not have you so banished, no, but dead. The men may mark the wages that envy earns, okay? Um, so for Oedipus in this scene, in this moment, this heightened moment where he's angry and lashing out, it is very clear he would prefer Crayon dead over just about anything else. And so um, eventually they'll kind of settle on, like, I'll take column A or column B, um, 
but here he's very angry and very much wants a crayon dead. All right. Um, I see that you will not yield nor believe me. None but a fool would believe such as you. You are not wise. Wise for myself, at least. Why not then for me too? Why for such a villain? Suppose you are wrong. Yet kings must rule. Not if they rule badly, says Crayon. Uh, oh, my city, my city. Uh, your city. Am I not Theban too? Um, and then the chorus interrupts. Seize princes. Look who comes and none too soon. Jocasta from the palace. Who else is fit to, as a peacemaker to reconcile your feud? Um... All right, so Joe Costa comes in with this, like, wonderful mom energy. She's like, misguided men, why are you raising your voices so loud? Are you not ashamed that the whole land lies suffering thus to voice your private injuries? Go inside, Oedipus, and go home, Crayon, and stop making a public scandal of petty grief. This fits this scene beautifully because Joe Costa really is the mom to Oedipus, and so I think they're trying to establish that really early on, that while the, the characters, Oedipus and Joe Costa, may not realize that they are blood-related and therefore Anne's mother and son, um, the first interaction we see with her with Oedipus is very much a motherly one. Like <laughs> she just shows up and she's like, you get inside, you go home. <laughs> um, and then Crayon says, my royal sister Oedipus, your husband wants me to choose a dread alternative, an outlaw's exile or a felon's death. Um, yes, lady, I have caught him practicing against my vile person, his, my royal person, his vile arts. May I never prosper, but die accursed if I am in any way guilty of this charge. Believe him, Oedipus, I beseech you for him, for his solemn oath's sake, for then for mine, and for your elders' sake, who wait for you here. And the chorus says, listen, king, king, reflect, we pray you, be not stubborn, but relent. So let this go. <laughs> um, and Oedipus says, so say to what should I consent? Respect a man whose integrity and truth are known to all and now confirmed by oath. Do you know what you're asking? And the chorus says, yes, I know. Oedipus says, declare it then and make your meaning plain. And the chorus says, condemn not a friend whom babbling tongues assail, but not suspicion against his oath prevail. So Crayon's always been known as a good guy in this town, and so they don't think it's fair that um, Oedipus is coming at him just so cross and so mean. Um, Oedipus says, do you realize that in seeking this, you are actually seeking my death or banishment? So he's like, you realize that if we don't, if we don't get rid of Crayon, that this really is going to be bad for me. And the chorus says, no, by the leader of host divine, witness Lord Son, such thought was never mine. Damned by gods and abandoned by friends, may I perish, if ever such intent I did cherish. But oh, my heart is desolate, musing on our fallen state, doubly abused, should discord grow between you two a crown and crown our woe. Okay, but they're like, mom and dad are fighting. We don't like it. <laughs> and Oedipus says, well, let him go. No matter what it costs me, my certain death or shameful banishment, for your sake I relent, not his. And Crayon, wherever be he be, my heart will still abhor or hate. Leave me in peace. Uh, and then Crayon says, you, you are as solid in your yielding mood as in your danger you are savage. Your temper justly plagues you the most. And Oedipus says, just leave me in peace and go away. And Crayon says, I go misjudged by you, but cleared by these others. And the chorus says, lady, lead him indoors. Why stay here any longer? And Jocasta says, tell me first how the argument started. Well, rumors brought suspicion and injustice provoked quarrel, says the chorus. And Jocasta says, we're both at fault. And the chorus says, yeah, both of them are at fault. And Jocasta's like, well, what was the tale? And the chorus says, like, ask me no more. This land is sore distressed. It is better sleeping ill's leave to rest. So just let it go, drop it. And if it says, strange counsel, friend, I know you mean me well. And yet to mitigate and blunt my zeal. Okay. Zealous is like to be overly excitable, overly determined to the point where it's like bad. <laughs> okay, like nothing can deter this person. Um, Chorus says, King, I say it once again, foolish were I proved insane. If I lightly put away my country's prop and stay, pilot who in danger sought to a quiet haven brought our distracted state. And now who can guide us right but you? Okay, so once again, we have this concept of only Oedipus can save them. Oedipus saved them before. He can save them again. Um, and Jocasta says, let me know. I implore you, King, what caused this stir with this unrelenting wrath? And Oedipus says, I will, for you are more than me. You are more to me than these, lady. The cause is Crayon and his plots. But what provoked this quarrel? Make it clear, says Jocasta. And Oedipus points out, he points me as Lias' murder. Of his known knowledge or upon report. 
Um, he is too cunning to, mit him to commit himself and makes the mouthpiece of a dishonest seer. All right, so we're actually going to find out that Jocasta does not believe in prophecy or seers or clairvoyance or fortune tellers or anything like that. And she's going to explain why here very shortly. Um, so Jocasta says, then you may ease your conscience on that score. Okay, so Oedipus says that he believes that Crayon was told by a prophet, by a seer, by a clairvoyant, by a, future, a fortune teller. And Jocasta's like, you don't need to believe any of that crap because it's not true. All of it's made up. And Jocasta is going to lay out her reasons here. And she says, then you may ease your conscience on that score. Listen and I'll convince you that no man has power in the prophetic art. Here is the proof in brief. An oracle once came to Elias. I will not say it was from the Delphic God himself, but from his ministers, declaring that he was doomed to perish by the hand of his own son. Okay, so she says they got a prophecy that Elias would die by the hand of his own kid. Um, a child that was to be born to him by me. Now, Lias, so at least the report affirmed, was murdered one day by high women, no natives, at a spot where three roads meet. Okay, so she's like, first of all, they said that Elias was going to die by the hand of his own kid, which definitely didn't happen because he was murdered by a group of people outside of the city. And then um, she says, as for the child, it was but three days old when Lias, its ankles pierced and pinned together, gave it to be cast away by others to on a trackless mountain so that Apollo brought it not to pass that the child should be his father's murderer or the dread terrifying accomplishment. Lias was not slain by his own son, as was the prophet's horoscope. O king, do not listen to oracles. Whatever the god wants us to know, he himself unaided will reveal. So once again, everybody in this play is either blind or oblivious. And this and we're gonna play up this idea of blind. So remember, we have a we have Teresius who's a blind man who can actually see like the truth. And you have people like Jocasta and Oedipus here who can see but are blind to what they have done. And so She's all like, oh, yeah, we got this prophecy that Laius would be murdered by our son. And so we took our son that was born to me and him, and we, we drilled a hole through his ankles and pinned them together and then left him on the mountainside to die. And she's like, so there's no way he, his, kid killed, um, his kid killed him. But, like, let's bring up the fact that Oedipus got a prophecy as well that said he would murder his own father. But these two people do not connect that they are probably, their prophecies are probably related. And I always, I always think it's so funny because it's just so clear that they're both blind to what they've done, um, even though, like, there's so much evidence to say otherwise. All right. Um, so Oedipus says, What memories, what wild talk about all the so of the soul came over me as you spoke, lady, I hear, as I heard you speak? Jakarta says, What do you mean? What has shocked and startled you? And Oedipus says, I thought I heard you say Elias was murdered at the meeting of Three Roads. And so, so Oedipus says, like, she's, she's rattled something loose. Like, I don't know how a man forgets that he has murdered another person, but apparently Oedipus forgot that he murdered somebody. Um, and Jocasta said, so ran the story that is current still. And Oedipus says, well, where did this happen? Do you know the place? And Jocasta says, Phocius, the land is called. The spot is where the road forks one way to Delphi and the other way to Dahlia. And Oedipus says, and how long is it since these things happen? It was just before you were proclaimed our country's ruler, and the news was brought to me. Uh, Oedipus says, oh, Zeus, what have you done with me? Well, and Jocasta's like, what's wrong? What was you so strongly? And Oedipus says, ask me not. Tell me the build and height of Laius. Was he still in manhood's prime? And Jocasta says, tall was he, and his hair was lightly strewn with silver, but not unlike you in form. I wonder why he was not. He was similar to Oedipus in form. I cannot fathom as to why that might be the case. I hope you can hear the sarcasm in my voice. Um, Oedipus says, oh, woe is me. I think unwittingly I have laid a dread curse upon myself. And Jocasta says, what are you saying? When I look upon you, my king, I tremble. Oedipus says it's a dread premonition that in the seer will prove not blind. One question further that will resolve my doubt. And Jocasta says, I shudder, but I will answer. And Oedipus says, did he have but a few attendants or a train of armed retainers with him like a king? And there were only like five, and one of them was a herald. So there was a small group that wouldn't have been normal for a king. Okay? And so Oedipus says, alas, it is clear as noonday, but now say, lady, who carried the report to Thebes? And Jocasta's like, a servant, the sole survivor who returned. So remember, when Laius was murdered, everybody in his group was murdered except one person who managed to survive. Um, and then Oedipus says, is he here or in the house? And Jocasta says, no, for as soon as he returned and found you reigning in place of Laius slain, he clasped my hand and begged to send me to the wild pastures where he might be farthest from the sight of Thebes. And so I sent him. He was an honest slave and well-deserved in some recompense. So once again, nobody is realizing that, that Oedipus murdered the prior king up here, apparently. Because, like, Jocasta is literally like, well, a guy came back and he saw that you were king and asked to leave. Whatever. 
All right. And so Oedipus is like, fetch it at once. I want to see the man. He shall be brought. Why should I summon him? Oedipus says, lady, I fear my tongue is overrun discretion. Therefore, I should question him. And Oedipus says, or Jocasta says, well, he shall come. But may I not too claim to share the burden of your heart, my king? She's like, we're married. Tell me what's going on. All right. So this last question over here um, on the right hand side of your screen is going to be um, what's going to be outlined here in this next section of where Oedipus is going to lay out how he came to murder his own father without realizing it. Um, now, he still doesn't believe that Laius is his dad, but he does believe that he has murdered Laius. Um, sorry for the yawn. All right, and so let's, let's see what happened as to how Oedipus ended up at the place where three roads meet and then murdered his own father without realizing it. So Oedipus says, and you shall not be frustrated by your wish. Now my imaginings have gone so far. Who has the higher claim than you to hear my tale of dire adventures? Listen then. And so Oedipus believes, Oedipus is adopted, but he truly believes that his father is a polybus of Corinth and his mother was Merope of Dorian. And I was held the foremost citizen till a strange thing befell me, a strange indeed. And yet scarce deserving all the heat it stirred, a party goer at some banquet drunk with wine shouted, you are not the true son of your father. Okay, so Oedipus goes to a party when I a man who's very drunk comes up to him and tells him, like, you are adopted, all right? And so, of course, anybody who would experience that moment would be ultimately like, what? So what is what would anybody do? They go and ask their parents, am I adopted? And so that's what he does. So he says, that bothered me, but I stomached the insult and for the night. And in the morning, I sought out my parents and questioned them, and they were indignant at, at the random slur cast on my parentage and did their best to comfort me. So his parents totally deny adopting, though they did. They deny that he is adopted um, to comfort me, and still, but still that venomous taunt rankled for still the scandal spread and grew. So they tell him, no, son, you are not adopted. You are our kid. That's not true. And, um, but, it, like, but Oedipus is still not satisfied by that answer. And so he leaves. He leaves um, his hometown of Corinth and, well, the town he was raised in, and goes to a prophet to ask them for more information. And so, so he says, so privately without their, without their permission, I went to Delphi where Apollo refused to speak to me, the knowledge that I had come to speak, seek. And instead of other grievous things, he prophesied, woe, lamentations, mournings, portents dire. Okay. Uh, they said I should defile my mother's bed and raise up a seed too loathsome to behold and slay my father from whose loins I sprang. And hearing this, I fled in the opposite direction from Corinth, never to see my parents again. So the monstrous prophecy would never be fulfilled. So because Oedipus's um, adoptive parents deny that they are not his real biological parents, um, he believes that if this prophecy were to come true, he would sleep with Merope and murder Polybus. So he runs. He's like, well, I don't want to kill my mom, and I don't want to kill my dad and marry my mom, like any normal human would do. And so he leaves. He's like, you know what? In order to keep this prophecy from coming true, I'm going to leave Corinth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to never see my family again. And that way, everybody will be safe. Okay? But he's not their kid. Okay? And he says, Then, lady, you shall hear the very truth. As I drew near the place where three roads meet, a herald confronted me, followed by an old man who sat in a car drawn by colts, as in your tale. The herald in front and the old man himself threatened to thrust me rudely from the path. And then the driver jostled me angrily, and I struck him. The old man, seeing this, watched till I passed from his car, brought down full on my head a double-pointed goat, which is like a, a club. Um, and yet I have gone, I got even with him and more. One stroke of my grand, my good staff sufficed to fling him clean out of his chariot and lay him prone, and so I killed them all. So literally, they like try to go down the same road at the same time, and one of them, Laius, bumps Oedipus off the road, and so... As Oedipus is passing Laius's chariot, um, Laius just like hits him on the head. And so Oedipus, in infinite rage, as always, turns around and just murders the entire group except for one. It's the worst case of road rage ever. Um, and, and the last thing he says, but if the stranger has anything to do with Laius, who is more miserable than I, what mortal could you have find more God abhorred or God hated? Wretch, whom no traveler, no citizen, may harbor or address, whom all are bound to harry from their homes, and the, and the same curse I laid on myself and myself alone. He's like, I didn't realize that, but I did murder the prior king, and I'm the reason that the town is like this. Yes, with these gory hands, I pollute the bed I, of him. I slew, say, am I vile? Am I not utterly unclean? A wretch, 
doomed to ban it, be banished, and in banishment forego the sight of all my dearest ones, and never tread again my native earth. Or else wed my mother and slay my father, Polybus, who sired and reared me. So once again, he still believes that Polybus and Merope are his actual parents, even though it's truly Laius and Jocasta. Um, and then, if one should say this is the handiwork of some inhuman power, who could blame his judgment? But you, pure and awful gods, forbid, forbid that I should see the day. May I be blotted out from living men before such calamity befall me. Um, and then I'm going to call it there. Um, we'll come back to this. We can, we'll finish it on a, uh, a later date when we're all together. But um, there's not very much left. There's like 15 lines. Um, so explain um, for this last one. You can do bullet points or sentences. I just need to know that you understand how Oedipus came to murder the prior king. All right. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I am always here for you. You can email me or text me. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you later.